Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Intuitive Angling. And man, I really appreciate you guys coming by the channel to check my second day practice report out from here at Lake of the Ozarks. Got our Toyota Series tournament starting in two days. I'm gonna give you guys a rundown how my second practice day went and sort of my plan for my final day tomorrow. I only got a half a day out there, so I'm gonna get into that in today's video. And guys, as you can see from the trees in the background, uh, fall's on the way, man. Leaves are starting to change. Just wanna invite you guys to swing by and check out our fall fish the moment lake map breakdowns um, these are maps i build for fishthemoment.com guys it's a great resource to learn more about your favorite lake or a lake you've never been on before and uh, it's got you know give you guys 40 gps waypoints on every map with some tips and advice on how to fish each spot you can download straight to your to your debt finder so i'll put the link in the description if you guys would like to get you one of those maps there much appreciate it Okay, guys, yesterday, um, a little, it was pretty similar conditions today. We had, you know, yesterday it rained most all day long. Fish bit really good. Today we had overcast most, or all day long overcast. And it's been sort of misty rain like it is right now. You guys, I don't know if you can see it behind us, but it's sort of been sprinkling. So we didn't have the intensity of rain today. We had a little bit more wind today. In other words, it was a really good fishing day. The, the conditions were really good to fish and, but um, it was a lot tougher for me today. Yesterday, I had a really good day. Um, today, I sort of tried to expand on the, the area that I'd fished the first day. I didn't fish the same water, but I tried to, you know, stay, you know, fairly close to where I was fishing within, you know, five or ten miles of there. Tried to duplicate what I was got going on. And um, I caught them, but not that, not that great. I, uh, you know, probably caught, you know, half the keepers that I did yesterday and probably half the non-keepers. And... Um, it, it's pretty typical though it's like when you when you when you start to dial in on something like i did yesterday a lot of times there's a specific section of the lake that really sets up for that type of cover that you're fishing and for me it has to do with the combination of the depth that the cover in is in and the water clarity and the way that i'm fishing in shallow water here the water visibility is super critical as far as getting that right water visibility. Some, if it's a little too clear, I can't catch them. If it's a little too off colored, I can't catch them. I, I'm looking for just that right water clarity. And if I don't find it, I'm struggling to get a bite, even if the cover is very similar to where I caught them yesterday. And um, sort of one of those things that doesn't really make sense because it's like, you can, I don't know if you guys can see all the shad right there. You can shatter everywhere on the lake right now, back in the coves and creeks. So, doesn't make any difference you can i pulled in some of these coves that have had just tons of shad like this and never had a bite and then go to another one that doesn't have any shad in it you'll catch a couple of fish so typical lake of the ozark fishing lake of the ozarks there is so much shallow cover here in the form of docks and rocks and sea walls and lay down wood and um, they can be everywhere you might pull back in a cove or a creek and you might catch one off a seawall you might catch one on a rocky bank there might be an overhanging tree in the water you catch one on you might catch one on a dock on one on a lay down tree um, but the key in this tournament is to figure out you know how to catch those quality fish as with with any tournament but anyway guys tomorrow <clears throat> got a short practice day i'm pretty much probably going to commit to the same general part of the lake that i did the last two days i feel at this point uh, i don't need to be running around a little bit <clears throat> I need to focus on, you know, really trying to expand the pattern that I figured out yesterday. And um, a big, there's a lot of ifs for me in this tournament. And the biggest if in this tournament is this dang boat that I'm in. You know, I got my buddy's 35 year old boat here and guys, it's got a bunch of issues. I had the, it's got three gas tanks in the thing and I was trying to figure them out today. And it's like the, the switch on the thing doesn't work half the time when there's no, there's no uh, selector. So you got to, adjust the switch with a pair of needle with a pair of pliers and you know sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't and then a couple times it died for no reason today and you know the front debt or the console debt finder is not working i got no gps and so the boat is a big if for me in this tournament but the thing is really here's the thing about it it's like it makes it takes me back to the 80s because i don't since i don't have a gps in the boat you have to pay attention to what's going on and in the Lake of the Ozarks, there's just hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of cuts and coves and creeks on this lake. And, you know, you try to want, if you get a bite off the spot, you want to mark it. And you can't do that since I don't have a GPS. So I'm having to remember everything. It's like, man, there's like a walnut tree on this bank. Or there may be a 
you know, uh, you know, telephone pole, you know, 20 foot up on the bank. I'm having to remember all these reference points to remember, you know, the areas that I want to fish and where I'm going to, because, uh, everything looks the same on this lake. It, I tell you what, GPS spoils people. I mean, it spoiled me. It's like, I've had it for so long. And when you don't have a GPS, it's like a new world, man. It's like, it's, it's like, it takes a while to get back into that flow of just being super aware of your surroundings. You can't, with a GPS, you can sort of space off and not pay attention to, to you know, what the what's on the bank or where you're going. You just look at that GPS. But when you don't have a GPS and you don't have a debt finder, you have got to be paying attention all the time. So that's sort of what I've been doing here. But anyway, guys, that's the... That's report. You know, I did catch a couple, you know, decent fish today, but like I said, it wasn't as good as yesterday. I, I, one of the things I'm really trying to do here is I'm trying to identify the mood and the personality of this fish, whether they want a chasing bait or a slow bait. And I've mixed it up a bunch. And it's like, one of the things that has got me puzzled a little bit is the conditions are perfect for a moving bait, for a chasing bait. And I haven't done that good on it. Most everything that I've gotten bit on has been just fishing slow as a snail and really, really picking cover apart thoroughly and, you know, fishing slow and methodically. Um, that could be due to a couple of different things. It could be due to, you know, just ball transition, fishing pressure, a lot of different factors with that. So anyway, guys, I'll give the report tomorrow. Like I said, got a short day because I got a Bridgeford promotion, you know, so I'm only going to have about a half a day. I didn't have much time today, really. I, today either, I, had, I dropped Elijah off at school, um, 7.30 or 7.20, he's got a school. So I, so I had to drive from Springfield up to the lake. And then there's a ton of boat ramps on Lake of the Ozarks. And I was trying to find a couple little off the wall ramps. So the first ramp I went to, it took forever to get to it down these little country roads and dirt roads. I get down there and the dang ramps close when I get there. So I had to go to the next ramp and which is about 15 miles away. So I get, go down the big valley and, you know, small roads again, I get down there and they're working on the ramp. So I had to go to two ramps by the time I got the boat in the water. So it was 1030 in the morning before I got the boat in the water. So another short day. So anyway, guys, I'll uh, give you the report tomorrow. Really appreciate y'all tuning in and we'll talk later.